Our sixth lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. A portion of this reading will also serve as the basis for our meditation this evening. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. So far our text. It's always a good idea to do. Dear Christian friends, Merry Christmas. It is wonderful to have all of you here. I wonder sometimes, though, if there's so much going on in the holiday that you can kind of feel lost. Where, do you ever feel like just a number? Where you're so insignificant in the grand cosmic scheme of things. How many billion people are in the world? How many million people are in America? Does God know you? I want to zero you in on uh, just the first couple verses of our text. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so everyone went to his own town to register. I, uh, there's nothing really exciting or Christmassy about that. I think some of you probably had to memorize that like me when you were young, because that's part of the Christmas story. But if you just told someone that, hey, that's what Christmas is all about, I think they might kind of look at you puzzled. What are you talking about? A census? Well, for those of you who aren't quite sure what Christmas is all about, or if you just feel, does God really know me? And am I just, just a blip on this cog? Addison, can you pull up this first one? I want to point you to March Madness. No, not this March Madness, Addison. There you go, the fancy graphic. I'm talking about the next one. Yes, that March Madness. By April 1st, every one of you is guaranteed to have a census form in your mailbox by law. So guess what's going to happen in March? They're going to show up. Now, all of you are looking at me deadpan like that is the worst March Madness comparison I've ever seen in my life. I think that's pretty bad. But the reason I did it was to just pound the point home. You do, in fact, matter. Every one of you matters to Uncle Sam, right? You will be counted. It's already started. Half a million people have been hired. They've been organizing for more than a year. Starting January 1st, do you know where they go first? Alaska. I guess that's a hard place to go. After that, they kind of work their way through and they do it by mail. And then, well, we're going to come back to exactly what happens if you don't fill out your census form later. You do matter. You matter more than just Uncle Sam, obviously. You matter to your God. You may seem like you're just a small cog in the the machine, and yet you're extremely important. 
Every one of you. God says that the hairs of your head are numbered. I have fewer and fewer hairs, and yet God still knows them all. And that's a comfort for me. It's been a little startling as I've been doing this now for 17 years. Uh, we always do a Christmas for kids and an Easter for kids. And you see the kids come in and you talk to them. And fewer and fewer of them know either story. That Jesus rose from the dead or that Jesus was born. Maybe they've heard of Jesus, but they don't know that he's God. They don't know that he came to save them from their sins. And this isn't malice. This is just ignorance where they don't know. In fact, if you look back, the last poll that I could find was from 2017. Only 57% of Americans believe that Christmas is real. That the account that you have in Scripture is true. You've heard me reference before, if you remember this church, the rise of the nuns, how up to 30% and it's creeping into 35, closer to 40%, of Americans, if you ask them, what faith are you? Catholic, Jewish, Protestant, they will check, none. And that doesn't mean that they're hostile to me or to you, Christian. It just means that they're not anything. And that, to me, is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to tell them all the awesome things that happened at Christmas. I want to introduce you to someone. Addison, if you could uh, push one more. There you go. That is the newest member of our church. That is Garland Simrel III, or as he's known, Baby Trey. Baby Trey was born eh, three weeks ago, I think, up at uh, Women's Hospital in Greensboro. When the time came for the baby to be born, um, she had every... <laughs> technological advance. Luke, my 6'4", uh, 17-year-old, was born there 17 years ago, and I'm sure it's only gotten better, of course. It's breathtaking the amount of care that goes into everything to have a baby. Well, let's go to the next one, Addison. Yeah, okay. You've seen that picture before. That's Jesus. Jesus was not born at Nazareth General Hospital. She had something else going on. And this is where the census comes back into play. One of the lessons that you heard me read was from the prophet Micah. And all of you heard it. And if I said, where was Jesus supposed to be born? You... In Bethlehem. Yeah. But where did Mary and Joseph live? Nazareth. This is a problem. Mary's probably working it out in her head. And then she's like, oh, no. Not the census. You're telling me I either have to hike 80 miles or sit on a burrow for 80 miles? Neither of those are good options. As you're great with child ladies, which one would you pick? Well, you get there, and at the end, you say a manger. Well, isn't that quaint? No, that's actually where the animals just ate. But at that point, Mary didn't want to have the baby in the street as she squats in the gutter. She had no options. It was not a pretty picture. And yet all of this went in, all of these little details happened to remind you of one important thing, that God keeps his promises and that you matter. No matter how small you may seem, no matter how out of control your life seems to be spiraling, all of these details went into the birth of that baby Jesus. I'll even dare say more than when we tried. With all the technological advances, if you, when you study all of the prophecies that went in and all the dots that connect, all the promises kept, the starting point for a conversation about Christmas is if God could keep that promise to the world by sending Jesus, could he keep his promise to you? The answer is, of course, yes. You see, think of the Bible as a giant puzzle, and Christmas is just the first corner piece and how it just sprawls out in a beautiful mosaic of God's love for you. Well, the biggest question people ask me, well, the worst answer I get, let's, let's say, is when I say, how are you and God doing? The answer is pretty good. I try to 
make him happy. I try to lead a good life. Here's the problem. God does question, so he either has to lower his standards or you've got to up your game. Well, he's not going to lower his standards. Ever since the creation of the world, that's not going to stop. Well, so what else is there? Can you up your game? Can you ever reach that standard that your God demands? I'm afraid not. You can't make up for the sins that you've already done. And there's no hope for you tomorrow either. In fact, even baby Trey, the Bible says, was born in sin. And so this is where Christmas is that promise kept, where Jesus came, not just so we could have a fun time and exchange presents and decorate a tree. This was a rescue mission for your soul. To make it personal, understand that if you were the only sinner, the only one in a whole world full of perfect people, this plan still would have happened. And God would have rent heaven to send down his son just to save you. Because he knows you by name. And his plan was that you would sit here tonight and soak in that gospel message of love and understand that you belong to him. And that there are no accidents in this world. He would not go to all the trouble to arrange the birth of his son and just leave your life to chance? Come now. You're too important for that. Oh, you may feel like you're floating in the breeze, but you're not. Listen to this verse from the Bible. This is Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Do you understand what happened on that first Christmas? The Roman soldier came by the inn, counted all the people, Stop by the stable. Oh, well, they're trying to hide. One, two, three. Jesus was counted. God sent his son and instantly, just like that. You have a verifiable point in history. How awesome is that? But Jesus makes the records minutes after he's alive. It's true. He kept all of those laws in your place because you can't up your game. So Jesus did for you. And because he did, he was good enough to die in your place. So that all the sins that you drag through life can leave at that manger. And go forward into 2020 free of guilt, free of sin. Imagine if you had another chance. This year you do. This year you can start over. That's what Jesus offers you. That's what Christmas means. God communicates that love in so many different ways, and I want to show you one of them. Addison, can you go yet one more? There you go. We're back at Trey. That was me at their house. I don't think I've shared this with the congregation yet because it's been so busy. We had the Sunday School Christmas program, and I was not myself. I apologize on Sunday. But um, I baptized baby Trey. In their home, they asked. They're a little worried about people with the flu for some reason. So they said they might just stay indoors. I said, listen, God gave you one job. Keep them alive, tell them about Jesus. And it's all, if you want to stay indoors for a few months, I don't blame you. But through the miracle of baptism, he's washed. Baptism saves Trey also. And that's just one of many ways that God communicates his love. And that can be yours as well. If Christianity is brand new, I'd love to talk to you more about it sometime. And of course, you're welcome to come back and visit anytime, any Sunday. Dear friends, the next time you open up your census, Addison, March Madness is coming. There you go. What happens if you don't answer it? Do you know? I have a confession to make. Back in 2010, I worked the census. And uh, there was kind of a running joke that came from our church council after that because people ended up joining our church <laughs> because I got to make friends. <laughs> That's, it's fun, right? Well, um, so they said, how about, Pastor, every six months you just get a new part-time job? <laughs> I didn't do that. And I held off this year because they did ask. And I said, no, I'm, 
I cannot. I, there's just no way. Well, if you don't answer the census, someone will come to your door. And there were people who just didn't answer just to see, I just wanted to see if you would actually come. I did, thanks. <laughs> Two. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but that's how some people are. Well, do you know that there's some people who purposely dodge us, d dodge the census workers, who weren't home? Do you know what happens? We can't give up legally. They will keep on coming and keep on coming. They will bring a sheriff's deputy after a few months because they have to go back to Congress with the number. Now, the illustration is, of course, not exactly parallel when it comes to Christianity and evangelism. If someone politely tells me not to come back anymore, I listen. But there's a certain amount of aggressiveness I think Christians ought to have. Do you think those shepherds left the, the manger? Well, guys, what should we do, pack it in? No! They went off and told anybody who was vertical and taking nourishment, guess what? The Savior is here. He came. God kept his promise to me, a shepherd. I live with animals all day long. God came for you too. And that's a powerful message to share. So go with all the veracity of a census worker, all the grace of a shepherd, and tell people that they count this Christmas. Amen. We continue with our next carol.